Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Robin Vining of Wauwatosa is a Democrat running in the 14th Assembly District. Robin, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for having me. Now, you have been very active in human trafficking and fighting that scourge. Yes. Is that a key part of your campaign or just something that got you involved? It's, it's, uh, it's really important to me. So I've been, um, I'm a co-founder of Exploit No More, which is a nonprofit that combats child sex trafficking. Um, and we partner with organizations across the city and state an all hands on deck situation. Um, t uh, Wisconsin is one of the hubs in human trafficking in the nation, um, and Milwaukee is really the hub in Wisconsin. So we are at a crisis situation as far as human trafficking goes in this nation, in this state, in this city, and I'm dedicated to ending that in this generation. If you're elected, what bill would you introduce on that subject next session? Um, so that's a good question. Um, some bills just passed this past spring. Um, I'd like to I'd like to deal a little bit with how the language that we use, um, prostitute versus survivor versus victim versus pr trafficked person. So part of that is I want to deal with the language. Um, I'd also like to deal with the market. Um, so the people who um, buy the girls, um, I'd like to deal with that. Um, and, um, and then I think, uh, as, as issues are proposed in um, combating human trafficking, I want to be on the ground in Madison to be a, right on the phone and, right a, a, and able to uh, tweak bills as we work through them. I think that's something that's really important to me. Okay, let's work through some of the major issues in the next state budget, which will be the most important thing adopted in the next session. Um, this current budget has a large increase in state aid for K-12 schools. Mm -hmm. Do we need another large increase in the next state budget? Okay, so the number one thing that we're hearing on doors is that people want to see education better funded. Um, I'm not a more funding or a less funding girl because I think um, that's a relative term. Right now we need more funding. Um, so that is a more, right, right now we need more. Okay. Um, people feel it, they want it. Um, I want to drive more money into it, yes. Um, but I think we need to make sure that we are appropriately funding. Where do we need the money? Um, let's appropriately fund the schools is what I, what I would say. That's Part of that debate is the growth in the Choice and Voucher Program from Milwaukee to Racine to statewide. Do you have a position on the Choice Program? Uh, I'm concerned that the taxpayer dollar has become a business opportunity for special interests. And um, I do not support an expansion. I think that all schools that are funded by taxpayer dollars need to play by the same rules. Your work on human trafficking is a obviously a criminal justice issue. The, mm -hmm. the future budget of our Department of Corrections is going to be a big issue. Two of our prisons were built in the 1800s. Uh, do you think we need a new state prison? So it's a hot question right now. Um, and it pairs well with how, how or do we need to reduce the prison population. Um, I think that crime is something that we talk about a lot in our district. Um, people are concerned about crime. I'm concerned about crime. I'm a mom. I'm concerned about crime. Um, the way that I think that we can attack the prison population and avoid a new prison mm -hmm. is that we can attack recidivism rates. So when a person exits prison and then they return, that's our recidivism, if we can reduce the number of people that come back to prison, we will slowly decrease the population over time in the prisons. Um, that also saves the taxpayer dollar because the taxpayers will fund the prison population. And, um, and it also reduces crime because obviously if a person is not coming back, they haven't committed the crime that would send them back to prison. So I think there's a lot of work to do on recidivism rates and there's a lot of power in that work to create some real positive change. So make those changes before we build a new prison. Absolutely, right? yes. Okay. Okay. The, um, the gridlock in the capital over how we pay for highways and bridges, construction mm -hmm. and maintenance, how would you solve it or like to see it solved? How would I like to see it solved? Um, 
I'd like to see it solved. <laughs> um, so I think right now there just aren't options on the table, and people have the common questions are, well, are you do you, are, you, are you cool with this option or that option or this option? Raise the gas tax. Raise, Raise the registration fee. Right, right, right. Toll. Um, right. Oh, totally. Yeah. And your answer? Is? My answer is. Right now, there are no options on the table that anybody's... We're not funding transportation right now. We're not funding infrastructure. Um, we need to leave all the options on the table and then dedicate ourselves to doing the work of getting the funding and protecting the taxpayers versus the spe special interests in that process. And if there was a package that raised the gas tax, it might have your vote? Is that kind of what you said? I don't know. I won't commit to that right now because um, all of the factors are part of the solution. So. I, I want to look at all of them. Local governments have been dealing with levy limits to control property taxes for about 14 years. Mm -hmm. Some local government leaders say that hurts their ability to provide local services. Yes. Keep levy limits, loosen them, get rid of them. Well, we shouldn't keep them. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a solid. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to run was because I was watching Madison strangle the local Wauwatosa government's ability to govern itself. Um, the local government is the closest to the people. And right now, we, um, we are struggling with how to fund. We're, we're restricted in how we can fund our own city. And, um, and so we cannot keep the levy limits. Absolutely no. Um, as to how we deal with it, that's a good conversation to have. Um, but when we've got a dark store bill that won't hit the, hit, hit the floor for a vote, um, that costs the city of Wauwatosa a million dollars in two years in, um, in uh, lawyer fees, um, that's, that's a big deal. Um, and when now we've got an educational referendum um, hitting the ballot in November because we're, we're begging at the ballot box for dollars. So when, when Madison is strangling the local governments um, and, and inhibiting their ability to fund themselves, um, I think we have a problem. The tax breaks and tax benefits for Foxconn has now led Kimberly Clark to ask for similar tax breaks, tax benefits. Your position on um, those uh, tax benefits are for private companies? I think my overarching concern about Foxconn is that it keeps changing. Um, it's hard to know what's going to happen next. Um, and I don't feel that taxpayers in general are being protected. So. Okay. So you'd be a no on both Kimberly Clark and if Fo if, uh, if another company wanted Foxconn type it's hard to breaks? It's hard to pick right now because if the bill keeps, or if the, the deal, if you want to call it that, keeps shifting, um, the factors keep changing. So if we could hold a governor, our governor's feet to the fire and say this is what the deal is, then I think we can start having conversations like concrete conversations about what we can do next. What are your potential constituents telling you about health care? What do you think Wisconsin's next step on health care should be? Yep, so we have knocked 10,000 doors now. Um, the number one thing we hear is um, please increase funding for education, and number two, right behind it, is concerns about health care costs. People are nervous. Um, my district is 98% insured, so getting insurance is not a tremendous problem for our district, but the cost of insurance is, and people are very nervous. Um, we have medications that cost $100, and suddenly they cost $1,000. Um, an EpiPen suddenly shoots up $100 without notice, and you find that out when you pick it up. Um, kids with life-threatening conditions, you're choosing between your groceries or your mortgage or your medication. People are very concerned about these things. Thoughts on how to preserve and maybe expand health care in the rural areas of Wisconsin? Well, day one, step one, or should have happened years ago, is to take the Medicaid expansion. Um, that's significant. Um, and that shifts money, opens up hundreds of millions of dollars in our general budget. And I think um, it, a tremendous amount of opportunity for us to, to deal with conversations like that. Does yeah. state government have a role in recruiting and retaining doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals? Um, it, the state government has a role in making Wisconsin look attractive, um, or I would say exciting. I mean, this is a great state, um, and we should be really proud of it, and we should exude that to the nation, and people should want to come and work here. And I think as legislators, we should exude that. Um, our state government should exude that, but we should also make it attractive, yeah. They, people should want to move here and work here. State government and Delta Dent Dental partner on a program that subsidizes dental clinics in medically underserved low-income areas. 
Should that be a priority in the next Medicaid budget? Well, uh, your mouth is very close to your brain. Um, and uh, oral health is really important. So I would say because of the health of the person, yes. Mm -hmm. When you do the doors, are you hearing about the issues of, of caregiving and caregivers? AARP estimates that 700 and 578,000, excuse me, Wisconsin residents act as caregivers. They're wondering whether we, we need a law that says that uh, Wisconsin hospitals would be required to recognize and work with family caregivers if someone they love is hospitalized. Have you heard that as an issue at all? I haven't. You have um, not. I mean, I stood on the front step with a woman on Sunday night and talked about how she just finished caring for her husband who just passed away. And she moved into, moved into our city out of the country, moved into our city to live in a duplex with her son so that he could help her help him. Mm. And um, it's, yes, it's something that we need to, to look at, but I'm, I, haven't, I haven't heard much on doors okay. on that. Mm -hmm. UW system budget, do we need to continue for a seventh and eighth year the freeze on resident undergraduate tuition? Um, well, if we're going to continue the freeze, then we need to fund the freeze. I think when we look at budgets, um, costs go up every year. And if costs go up every year, we need to be honest that revenue needs to match those costs. And so if we're going to cap it, we're going to say that the, the revenue can't go up, then we need to fund that difference in there. So we, if we're going to then we need to fund the freeze. The bills in the, in the capital that would legalize recreational and medical marijuana, your position? Um, so my position on this is actually kind of long, so be ready. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> so uh, medical marijuana, that should have happened yesterday, it should have happened years ago, just do it. Um, we have children across the state who are suffering seizures and suffering un unnecessary brain damage because we are not medicating in a way that could save that damage from happening. We should not be sending families to Illinois to get the medication that they need to, to protect their children. Um, and then um, as far as recreational marijuana goes, I think there is an issue. Um, this is an issue that um, that <laughs> um, this is an issue that um, we're a democracy and I don't think it's a matter of if it's a matter of when the, the voice is going to raise up and when the when the public demands that this be legalized it's going to be legalized so my job as a legislator is in the how how do we legalize it okay. and um, and so I would look at issues like um, we would we, we need to watch California and Colorado we need to look at the fact that it's cash only and we see um, it, it's dangerous um, in where it's sold if there if it's cash only um, we need to deal with that we need to look at um, we legalize marijuana people can legally use marijuana but then it's hard to get jobs if drug testing doesn't deal with the fact that it's now legal. Um, and so it's prohibited people from getting jobs. Um, we, we're looking at studies where low-income communities are disproportionately affected by the legalization of marijuana. And we need to make sure that we, we deal with that. And um, also really important is the expungement of records um, and releasing people from jail. So if we have people in jail, they need to be released immediately. Um, and if we have people who've been previously jailed, we need to expunge those records, expunge the records across the board. And something that I talk a lot about is um, we need to make sure that there is funding for that expungement, um, and we need to make sure that there is a reasonable timeline that we will be held to um, to expunge those records and release the people from jail. The final question, the 14th district does not have an incumbent. Do you want to talk about differences between you and your Republican opponent? Um, look, I got into this race because I want to bring, bring positive change and creative solutions to Madison. I care, I care very much about people. Uh, people matter is a refrain that that runs through my head every day um, as we work. And I think um, I love being on doors and listening to people talk about their desire for us to fund education better than we currently do, um, to, that they're, they're scared about their health care. Um, I want them to be able to plan for their future and not their fears. And I think um, we need an economy that works for everyone. I care about human trafficking, and I want to fight that fight in Madison as a legislator. So regardless of who I'm running against, I am here to fight for the 14th district every day and bring some positive change to Madison. Robin Vining of Wauwatosa is a Democratic candidate in the 14th Assembly District. The election is November 6th. Robin, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, 
Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 Partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.